So today I'm going to show you how I did this layout for this dog bone sign. I'm going to show you how I drew the dog bone, how I put the text on there, how I did the outlining on the text, and how to reverse the text. And then this document is 14 inches wide, which is wider than a single piece of paper. And I'm going to show you how I use Photoshop to divide this into two pieces and able to reassemble them after I printed it out on freezer paper for a transfer. So let's get started. Okay, so here we are in Photoshop Creative Cloud 2020. This should work in any other versions of Photoshop too. So let's go ahead and create a new document. And I'm just going to come, I got a custom one here, which I've already set up. So you may, you want to set this, the, the document size, to the size of whatever your board is that you're going to put this on. It just makes the layout easier. That way you know it's going to fit on your board. You can look at it, visualize what it's going to look like on your board. So. I'm going with the 14 inches. If this is going to be on pixels, you just switch it here. If it's pixels, you just go here and switch it to inches. So I'm doing 14, 14 inches by 5.5 inches, which is the size of my board. And the uh, background content you want to make transparent. Okay, because this is just going to be a transfer to, to do your board with. So you hit create, and there's your document. So the first thing you want to do is you want to come in. Now, I do have individual videos on drawing the dog bone. I have individual videos on outlining the text and then I'm going to have an individual video on slicing this thing to where it can print out on two pieces of paper too. You should be able to do all this through in Photoshop. So, so the first thing we're going to do here, I'm going to go kind of fast on this because I've got these individual videos and I'll put links to those and you can go back and watch those if you don't catch what I'm doing in this part. So you just want to draw a triangle and come up here and I like three pixels because it's heavy enough that you can see it but it's not going to waste a lot of ink that's kind of the whole point of this thing is not wasting a lot of ink and I just know from mine you I'm making mine 700 uh, 720 pixels wide and then I'm going to make the height of my triangle up here 230 okay and that changes it up here you can also make changes that up here as long as this triangle is still selected so then you come up here to you move to, now this 230 on the height of the triangle that number is important uh, because let's go ahead and center this first then I'll show you hit the move tool up here at the top and then come up here and center, center vertically and center horizontally and if for some reason it won't let you do this sometimes the selection is picked and it won't let you change any of these so if if these aren't lit up for you just open up these three little dots and select canvas right there and now it'll allow you to move these things around so now we're centered in our document and on the the length of your triangle you just don't want it too close you don't want it too short but you don't want it too close to the ends when we put the circles on you'll see what I'm talking about there so the next thing we want to do is go ahead and draw one of our circles so you come back in here to your shapes tool hold it down select the ellipse tool hold down shift and just drag out a circle don't worry about how big it is at this point. It should still be three pixels. If it's not, you need to change that. And then with this thing locked right here, you got this unlocked. With this locked, change the width to 230 and hit enter. And that'll make it a 230 by 230 circle, which is the same diameter as the width of our, tri of our rectangle is. I always want to say uh, triangle when I'm talking about a rectangle for some reason. So you come over here and you just move this thing over here about in that area where about two-thirds of the diameter of the circle is below the triangle the other third is above it okay and then this this doesn't have to be perfect at this point and for some reason or another I unselect and then reselect my ellipse and then you hit control C and control V and it makes a perfect copy of your first circle so you come back over here and at this point you just want to make sure that they're both aligned on the end of your rectangle okay so now the next thing you do is you come in and you select both ellipses over here just hit shift and click ellipse one ellipse one and at that point you can move these things all together so you want to make sure this is on this line here and you're going to see these little red bars come out that tell you that you're set height wise let's see right here I got the lines going up and down that says I'm lined up on the end of the triangle and as I move up I get that little box and that tells me that I'm perfectly centered from here to here to here to here is all the same distance so once you have that 
Again, I'm going to unselect and select both of these and hit Control C and Control V. You can also hit Edit, Edit Copy, Edit Paste to do that too. It'll do the same thing. And while you still got your Move Tool selected, you just slide these things down until you're lined up here and you get these little box, the little red box around that. That tells you everything's centered up the same distance all the way around. Okay, so once you have that, that's the basic shape of your dog bone. So just come back over here to your layer panel, click on ellipse, and then hold down the shift key and click on the rectangle where you select all five of these. And then you just come up here to the top, you get on layer, and then you hit merge shapes, and it makes all that one shape now. So hit your selection tool, and then just click out off the document, and now you got your bone shape. Okay, so the next thing we're ready to do is we're going to start entering our text into it. So the next thing you want to do is come over here and select your text tool. And I've got this Captain Comic, which is a text that I'm using for this particular sign. You can pick whichever text you want, but you want it to be a pretty broad text, uh, just for the sign carving, for, but whatever text you like using when you do carving. And I'm going to start with 100 points, so I'm just going to click somewhere in the center of my document, type out in all caps, that's my dog's name, Prince. And then once you do that, just select the Move tool, and then center horizontally and center vertically. That puts your text right in the middle. So the next thing we want to do is we want to make outlines of this. So now that we have our text in here, you want to come over here to your text layer, and you want to double click it. So right here, you want to click on Stroke, and then you want to click on stroke out in the there to open up all your parameters for your stroke and we're gonna go let's start out with maybe say a three or something like that and you can't see your stroke yet but if you look here the stroke is there you just can't see it because your text is black so if you click center that makes your text a little bit bigger inside is a little smaller and the outside is even bigger yet so I think we're probably on this particular one I think we're gonna go with center text and you can just pick whichever one it'll just make your text broader however you want it to be okay so now we have a stroke on there you just can't see it yet so click OK on that and then right here your your text layer is still selected so this fill right above that that's applying to this text so you just take this and drag it down to zero and now you've got outline text. So we can come back if we want to. We had that at three. Uh, double click your stroke layer again. So if you want to make that a little bit bigger, you can you can adjust the size of your stroke in there. So for my sign for the inside, I'm going to make the stroke five, just to make it a little bit heavier. Uh, the outline one will be fine because that's not going to be as critical is the carving out around the, the name there so so that's how you do it now we got the outline of our bone and then we got our text in here but we've got it the text itself is outlined now so now when we print this thing out we're not printing all this black ink out so it's going to use a minimal amount of ink okay so we have two more things to do we need to divide this thing into two pieces and we also need to flip our text because this could be a transfer so our text needs to be in reverse so to do that, we go over here and you highlight your text, and then you come over here and you go down here under Edit, and you have a Transform. This is really simple. If Transform, you come down here to the bottom, and you flip vertical. So now your text is transferred into reverse. So when you put it down on your board, it'll come out right. And again, I've got individual videos on all of these steps. So if anything confuses me doing it fast, uh, I'll leave links so you can go watch the individual videos on each of these steps. So the next thing we need to do is we need to divide this thing into two pe two pieces of paper basically because it's 14 inches long and it won't print on a single piece of paper. So right down here towards the top you have a slice tool. So select your slice tool, bring it back over your document and then just right click and then hit divide slice. And you got two options, horizontal and vertical. We want to select vertical and we want to make it into two pieces, two slices. And you hit OK, 
and you see that slices this into two separate documents now but it slices it right down the middle it doesn't it doesn't leave any space in it okay so we're going to print that out that way so now there's a certain way you have to save this too to make it work so you come over here to file and in my version of Photoshop you have to go to export and save for web if you have an older version of Photoshop safer web may be under the file section but either way you can get to it from one of these two ways so you want to go into safer web and then it's going to bring up this and you want to leave it in a gif if it defaults to gif leave it to gif because that's going to leave it transparent and then you don't even have to put a name or anything on it and just hit save and it's going to open up an images folder and i have a dog bone uh, folder and then it creates this little images folder to put it in and you hit save Okay, so now we're going to open that folder back up. And there's my dog bone folder with my images folder. So now I've got these two right here. Two separate documents, GIF files, each half of my dog bone. So I'm going to take one of these. I'm going to show you one more thing on how to print them to make them come out right. So you can right click this and I'm just going to open it back up with Photoshop. So now we're going to go in and we're going to hit File and we're going to hit print and when you print it you want to find the setting go into, and your printer may be different but find your printer settings your advanced printer settings so I just hit print settings there out of the Photoshop dialog box and this goes to my printer my HP printer and then you click on advanced and somewhere in there hopefully if your printer has this capability you'll have this borderless printing it's going to print borderless It'll, you can choose print with a border or print without a border so we're going to choose print borderless and hit OK, hit OK, and then hit print. OK, so now I have both of my halves of my sign printed onto the freezer paper. And if you, first of all, you got to be very careful with these that you don't touch any of the ink. It will smear it. So as you can see, I've got an overlap on this paper. So what I have to do now is take it and... I need to trim this off on one piece, and then I can tape them together. So I'm using a paper cutter. If you don't have a paper cutter, you can lay a straight edge right across this and cut it with a pair of scissors, and that works just fine too. But I'm gonna use my paper cutter since I've got it. So I wanna put it flush up at the top here, and I'm being very careful not to touch any of my ink areas. And basically, I'm just gonna slide this thing until my ink is right on the edge. And then I'm going to hold it down tight here so it trims good. Okay, so now I got one side cut off. So I can get my paper cutter out of the way now. I can take my sign. Get that in here good where you can see it. And I want to just take this and adjust it to my bone and my letters and everything line up nice and even. Okay, so now that I've got this thing lined up good, next thing I want to do is just want to take my two pieces of paper together. And just anywhere outside of the frame, if I can get this, get it where it's being held together good. That looks good right there. So then I just want to take that, and I'll put another piece of tape across the top. pick that up and if your tape goes over the edges just roll it over it's not that's not a big deal okay so now I have one single piece it's my transfer ready to go and you can see where I've touched or ran paper across it it will smear really easy so all right so the next thing I want to do is I want to transfer it over onto my board and I'm going to make this a little bit easier I'll show you what I'm going to do here is I'm just going to cut some of this excess off the ends. And all that's gonna do is make it easier for me to line this up on my board. Again, being very careful not to touch any of the ink areas. Okay, so I've got that out of the way now. So I'm gonna bring my board in. Now I did not make my board perfect in size because I'm only gonna use this side of this knot. I'm only gonna use about this much of this board but I'm gonna cut all the way through it so it's not really gonna make any difference. 
I like this end of the board, so that's where I'm going for. So I'm coming in here, and this is a full cutout. The layout is not super critical as long as the whole thing is on the board. So I can see through there. I'm away from the edges everywhere on my board. So all I need to do at this point is I want to come down on one end of it and tape it down. And then from that point, and with this inkjet, inkjet transfer onto this freezer paper, I have not had any trouble with getting a transfer doing exactly what I'm doing right here. It's just like anything, you're putting something down and you want to rub the bubbles out. Start closest to your tape, wherever you have it secured down, and just run across this thing. I've seen some where they, you know, they say you need to use something hard or like a squeegee or something like that. I've not had any trouble whatsoever getting a good transfer, just rubbing this thing just like this. So I'm just keeping it down tight, running all the way across. Make sure I get across all my letters and my dog bone shapes. Okay, now the good thing about taping it down is that you do get the opportunity to double check it before you're finished. So just pull it up nice and easy. That's perfect. I've got a little bleed through here and there. My end's a little bit messed up, but I can go back with a pencil and fix that. So I'm perfectly fine with that. So I can go ahead and pull this thing back off. And there's my dog shape, or my dog bone sign shape. So, okay, so that's it for this video. Uh, I'm going to have a follow-up video with this, obviously, of me cutting the sign out and making the sign. So if you want to come and check that out, I'd really appreciate it. Please like, please subscribe, please share my videos. Thank you.